Thank you Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. So hey guys, I am finally crawling back to my social media presence after a two week long extreme fatigue episode, which I can only assume was something like a recharge period from a gargantuan amount of social interactions on the days leading up to and following my wedding, which was absolutely perfect by the way, and I will talk about that a bit later. So. In this video, at long last, I will show you guys the process of painting my wedding invitation art. I knew from the start that I wanted to mail out physical invitations because I just love fancy paper goods and so I did some research in terms of what I wanted the invitations to look like and settled on a clear plastic invite with the information stamped in silver foil, which was designed by my maid of honor by the way. and. That would sit on top of the drawing and of course i couldn't pass up an opportunity to do some fancy back sealing as well so i had to rip this envelope while i was opening it but yeah um i actually ordered a custom stamp as well but ended up using a bunch of other stamps that i had so it was a variety but yeah the finishing touch was a vellum envelope as you can see and the rest of the video will be showing you guys my execution of the painting so I did consider a bunch of other options first, like before I decided to actually paint the invitation, but I decided against using a photo for various reasons, one of which is that I have never been particularly comfortable <laughs> with photos in general. Like I, I've never liked taking, having my photo taken and especially under like semi-professional or professional circumstances, it just freaks me out. Um, I've gotten a little better with that over the years, but still it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. And secondly, I don't know, it's just like there's something about engagement photos that to me has this cheese factor that for some reason I just personally can't handle picturing myself in that particular photo situation. So I figured um, just drawing something would take the edge off like for me personally even though i suppose some people would consider that even more cheesy but whatever so yeah like i've said i've never really done anything like this before and i have never particularly enjoyed drawing self-portraits either but you know i just thought long and hard about it and decided that I won't waste this once in a lifetime opportunity to use my art skills for something like this. I've always thought that it's really, really cool when other artists draw stuff that directly relates to their actual life. You know what I mean? Uh, drawing has always been some sort of door to a different place for me and it's always been about escapism and so it's never like directly been associated with anything in my ongoing life. But anyway, yeah, so Basically how I went about it was after I did the research and I decided what kind of look I wanted, um, I decided on the format being vertical, obviously, and um, it didn't really matter to me what size the drawing was going to be, so I just picked whatever paper I had and then I figured I would decide on the dimensions afterwards. And so I just took a couple of photos of us together as like a general reference and I'm going to show you guys a couple of those right here. But uh, yeah, I decided to go with a digital sketch for this because honestly, like I was really nervous going into it and I really wasn't sure what to expect because I've never really done anything like this before. And the likeness is something that I would be really worried about, especially with myself because I don't know, I, I don't like drawing myself and I feel like it's really, like I don't really know what I look like. It's hard to explain, but I feel like I always look really different in photos than what I see in the mirror, so it kind of messes with my head, like I, I don't even understand really what I look like, seriously, but um, yeah, and on the second hand, like since my now husband slash at the time fiance's features are just so familiar to me, I feel like that's always a thing that also messes me up. When you see someone so often and you're so familiar with their features, it's almost like, I don't know, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint what exactly makes them look the way that they do. I've always found that with my best friends, for instance, like most of them, I don't know, it's just it's difficult to draw them because I feel like I'm too familiar with their faces. But anyhow, 
yeah, uh, this painting actually happens to contain the three extremes when it comes to art. Uh, the most uncomfortable thing to draw, which is my own face. Uh, the most difficult thing to draw for me, which is an adult man's face. <laughs> Still to this day, the most difficult thing to draw. Um, and the absolute easiest uh, autopilot thing to, to draw for me, which is flowers. So for that, I, uh, as you can see, that goes like way faster than any of the other process. In fact, sometimes when I watch this footage, I'm like, man, I feel like my brain just turns off and my hand just does something by itself when I draw stuff like this, like foliage and flowers. Uh, but yeah, so um, I will say, obviously I was being very generous with my own face and you know, I thought about it and I figured why not? Like, I'm not gonna go out of my way to capture likeness in all its, uh, little details when it comes to, you know, things I don't like. So obviously I smoothed a bunch of stuff out like I usually do with my regular artwork. So it was kind of hard because of that too. Like I noticed that I do obviously smooth everything out because I draw super stylized faces. So trying to get a likeness of an actual person, aka myself and my husband <laughs> was very difficult. So yeah, it wasn't like the best result, I will say, but uh, I honestly tried my best and I, I just have to settle for what I have, so yeah. I think I did pick the most safe approach for me when it comes to um, the art process itself. It's the most slow and cautious, cautious type of build up that I do. First of all, obviously starting with a digital sketch, which is a very safe option because I obviously had the opportunity to work on the sketch up until the point where I figured it was decent enough, which is something that I feel like wouldn't have really worked if I were to just sketch on paper because I feel like I would have gotten super frustrated and erased things a million times before I was happy and maybe I would have even given up on that. But um, yeah, like you probably noticed, I do use ink and I used colored ink for everything in this process i'm pretty sure it was kind of a while ago so i don't remember exactly but i'm like 99 percent sure that i just used roar and clinger clinger <laughs> inks for uh, the entirety of this piece i have a ton of colors to choose from so yeah and the reason why i did that is because it's easy to work in layers and as usual i heavily diluted the ink um that i used to do the line work with so that it kind of blended a little bit with the coloring later on uh, but yeah, and unfortunately, I did not record everything. Okay, I had to pause for a sec, but uh, anywho. Yeah, I was saying I did not record every single part of the process, unfortunately. Uh, for reasons that I cannot remember at this point, but um, there will be a pretty big skip later on. But I suppose it's not too big of a deal because it's mostly just me filling in the background elements. And that's pretty straightforward, but... I'm just gonna take a quick minute to thank this video's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network, something I wasn't aware of before this. <laughs> I've actually never used a VPN before, so as a first time experience, setting it up was super straightforward. Surfshark is basically an app you can get on either your phone or computer and pretty much any device that connects to the internet or as a browser extension, which I currently also have on my Chrome. And it has a ton of super useful features, the main one being a private and secure browsing experience. It protects your data from being collected and allows you to use public Wi-Fi on your phone without risk if you like to travel a lot or work in cafes. Another thing I wanted to mention that's huge is Surfshark's ability to change your virtual location. So for instance, if I want to get access to Japanese Netflix, all I need to do is go on the app, change my location to Japan, refresh Netflix, and just like that, I can watch anything I want that's not available on the Canadian Netflix and specifically wanted to check out this new show called Spy X Family, which has been recommended to me a bunch lately. So I can do that super easily now without having to sign up for Crunchyroll or whatever other service that I might need. So I've only had Surfshark for a pretty short time, but it's already been super useful and I would totally recommend it, especially since it is only a couple of dollars per month. So if you wanted to check out Surfshark VPN, you can go to surfshark.deals slash cosmic spectrum art and enter the promo code cosmic spectrum art for 83% off and three extra months for free. Link in my description. And now back to the video. 
anyways, um, I do think I captured most of it, and yeah, I actually ended up deciding a lot of things arbitrarily on the spot. I, I did kind of like look at some bouquets in terms of uh, flowers like i picked some stuff that i like but i will also say that none of these are any flowers in particular i just kind of went by shape and um drew things that are somewhat random so i didn't reference any particular plants and i did kind of make things up and you can probably tell <laughs> just by looking but um yeah and i i actually did decide on a lot of the colors arbitrarily as well um the only color that i predetermined before starting this was burgundy because i actually ordered the plastic portion of the imitation from an etsy seller who had some uh, envelope colors to choose from and i really really just like this deep burgundy color and i kind of just decided right there and then right then and there that burgundy will be the dominant color for all my wedding related stuff which it ended up being uh, which it ended up being, yeah, like, uh, my bridesmaids' dresses were burgundy, but, yeah, so, like I said, burgundy was the only color that I really settled on, and I used it in the background, and as you will be able to see in a couple of the elements, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't really do a whole lot of planning, but like I said, I, I started with a digital illustration, and then I went super easy on the facial tones, and the first thing I did was pretty much just dilute the same ink that I used for um, line work and used it to put down some shadows on the faces. The faces were definitely the most difficult part so I decided to just deal with those first and in case something went wrong I don't know I figured maybe I could like start over again and as you can see there are some parts like uh, my husband's hair. His name is Stefan by the way so I will just refer to him as that um yeah Stefan's hair I left I didn't even ink it because I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with it and so yeah I just kind of took everything bit by bit and I guess I didn't even record myself painting in his hair but I kind of did it as a one big shape and then added some dabs of darker color in certain areas so that's how I ended up approaching it it was kind of pretty experimental in a lot of ways just because stylistically um the whole thing is a lot less stylized than my typical work which was um the um awkward factor for me i guess because and I, the, the reason why i did that was because i wanted there to still be some sort of likeness and i think to some degree i did manage to capture that so I was saying that uh, basically I found the entire process, well, aside from the autopilot flowers, um, to be very nerve wracking, especially when I was drawing Stefan's face, because like I mentioned, drawing men, like adult men for me is for some reason the most difficult thing. Like I don't even, most of the time, I don't even understand where I go wrong I just see that it doesn't look quite right but i can't even tell why until like way later on like for instance in this case um at the time i did my absolute best that i could manage on the spot and you know i honestly thought it was pretty good until like later a couple of days later when i looked back on it i noticed i started to notice like little things that were probably off and um yeah now that it's been a few months i can see that i think i just made his eyes too big and i think that's like the biggest thing that i can you know notice that went wrong right now overall my biggest tendency is to try to simplify things as much as i can and to just like smooth everything over and that i think in combination with making everyone's eyes bigger just because that's what i always draw stylistically um i think that's the deadly combination that makes it extremely difficult for me to draw men but uh yeah overall i still think it's not that bad even though it the, both of these are just like I don't know it's like almost like they're too clean or something but I don't really know how else to describe it so yeah this is actually one of the very few paintings that I've ever done that covered the entire paper with ink in the end which is pretty cool I think this is literally like the third one ever that um I've ever had that happen with because most of the time I do tend to have a, either a white background or something really simple where there's a lot of negative space that's just left white but yeah, so um, while the process is happening in the background, I can tell you guys a little bit about how everything went. 
I don't even know if, well, like most of you were aware that I had my wedding, so I will just kind of reiterate. So on May 14th, I did have my wedding and uh, it went absolutely perfect, honestly. Um, I was kind of nervous leading up to it and there was still a lot of planning that I left to the last minute, but overall, I think everything went super smoothly. Honestly, it's kind of surprising because I do notice that things tend to get super stressful for most people so close to the wedding and I think I was kind of lucky that it didn't get too bad for me and I'm trying to remember if everything, if anything went wrong at all but I will say that I, I don't think so and the only thing was that I had to rush a bit because I um, took forever getting ready like me and the bridesmaids took forever getting ready. By the way, if you guys watch um, other art YouTubers and you're aware of Chris Hong art, she was one of my bridesmaids and I will show you guys some photos with her permission eventually. But yeah, I actually, the reason why there haven't been any photos in this video um, is because I haven't really gotten them yet. I want to wait, I've gotten some, but I want to wait until I get all of them so I can pick and I don't know, also I was kind of thinking about it and I figured it is kind of weird to put those photos into like a super public YouTube video. And I'll be honest, like even putting this video together was kind of weird for me because it is kind of way more personal in like a very real way if that makes any sense like it's not that my other art isn't personal it is actually very personal also but this seems like it's too real if you know what i mean so it's, it's a little bit weird i think probably because it's a self-portrait um that's what makes it so strange but yeah i still wanted to share with you guys anyways because I was honestly pretty happy with how it ended up turning out and I was really glad that I made the decision to do this even though it's definitely not something that I would have expected myself to do even like a couple of years ago. It's pretty out of character for me but I'm very glad that I do things that are um, out of my comfort zone now and then. I feel like that's honestly been one of the best changes that I've made in my life in the last uh, several, well, sorry, maybe like four years or so, I started doing a lot of things, forcing myself to do a lot of things that are very much out of my comfort zone and I don't, like, it's never had any anything bad happen from that, it's only been like really good experiences and obviously a lot of personal growth and I do feel like I have changed a lot as a person over the last several years uh, as well. One of the things actually is, so I have become a lot more social over the last three or four years, uh, way more than I have ever been before. And it took some effort, but it was very enjoyable for me. And I do really like um, going to social events now, but I actually tend to forget that by nature it's never really been something I naturally gravitated towards and still I find that sometimes like I don't really understand why I'm so tired for such a long time after social events but then I remember that it's it's because of the uh, introverted nature and the needing of recharging the social battery so which I I'm pretty sure that's what happened after the wedding because there were so many events like leading up to it and then even afterwards as well that I found myself kind of <laughs> so out of gas um, physically kind of mentally but mostly physically that i actually slept so much like uh, every single day i mean i'm really lucky that i actually can do that and so i had to like push some work forward in order to allow myself to just sleep and like regain my energy but yeah so this video i i really wanted to do it right after the wedding like to post it a week later but unfortunately i needed more time to recover and um yeah i was also hoping to include some photos in it maybe maybe i'll put like one in or something but i do want to wait until i get all my photos and then maybe i'll post some on instagram but yeah um i can't uh, one thing i wanted to mention is that overall looking back on this painting i do think that it does have a very like cautious vibe to me at least in terms of technique and execution compared to all of my other work like at least most of my other work um and i do think that the fact that i was scared to mess it up so badly um and being cautious 
for real like the whole time um is really kind of what it, it just made its way into the drawing itself and when i look at it i can see it it looks um a little more feeble than the other stuff that i draw but i think that's fine because overall i, I still think um it turned out pretty decent but yeah so um this is the big skip that i mentioned earlier so um, yeah, like I said, a lot of the decisions that I made when I was painting this were kind of arbitrary and made on the spot. So at some point I decided that I wanted to black out the background. And the reason why I say it was kind of random is because if I actually thought this through, um, I would have used a lighter green tone on the foliage. It's only something that occurred to me later that even when I used the blackest ink that I had, um, in some parts, it was still actually kind of similar to the dark green and leaves. So looking back, I would have definitely um, used a different lighter green if I knew that I was going to black out the background like this. So it's like, you know, in the little things that planning could have really paid off. But overall, I don't think it was like a big deal in the end anyways. But yeah, so um, I used the burgundy color for the background within the frame and... Another thing that I um, think is not like the best result looking back because of the lack of planning uh, before execution is the the kind of like lack of contrast between Stefan's hair and the background. So I was thinking that maybe I should have uh, used a lighter or like went lighter on the burgundy behind his hair, but then you know, honestly, when I look at it again, I think maybe that would have looked kind of like a glowing effect or like a halo, which would have just made him look like Jesus or something. So I think uh, in the end, this looks fine. It, it kind of works. So yeah. And then um, I was kind of noticing these things while I was painting it, uh, since it was kind of spontaneous in some ways. But I decided to just go easy and not overthink it or overwork it too much. Because sometimes when I go to like when I feel like I want to fix everything and I want to kind of perfect everything it ends up just flattening out the image and making it look way too even and in this particular case I kind of actually really liked how I didn't even put any line work into his hair which was a little bit different like I almost never do that and honestly like I don't even remember why I decided to do that it doesn't really make any sense but hey it worked out so <laughs> there's that um for my hair i i did line all of it because it's pretty light blonde so i figured um i don't want to just leave it up to the shading to show form so that was the reason why i decided to uh put line work into my hair and not his and yeah like honestly what you're looking at now is me just trying to quickly decide how much more work I want to put into this which didn't end up being all that much more um I wasn't sure if I was gonna bring out the pencils uh the polychromos pencils for this because like I said I didn't want to spend too much time and overwork it and just like ruin it somehow because at this point I was trying to be extra cautious you know because I was relatively happy with how the faces turned out I think the likeness was you know enough and I think it overall everything looked fine so at this point I was pretty much afraid to just do something to ruin it which is why the pencils did come out because I figured I could put a little bit more work and if it does start to look overworked I could always go back and erase some of the pencil which thankfully I did not end up doing but uh yeah um I don't remember how long this took me overall I believe I just kind of did it over the period of one day or something like that and the subsequent steps were basically just scanning it in making sure it fits in with the format of the invitation um, slash the size of the invitation that i picked from the etsy seller and uh it ended up working out super perfectly um i'm actually like super lucky that my best friend my maid of honor she is a graphic designer and she also works at a print shop so it's thanks to her amazing help with like literally everything that so many things were very cohesive for the wedding in terms of the printed media like oh i'm gonna show you guys later i think um i should be able to find some photos i was thinking of maybe doing like a vlog separately from this because 
I do think it would be really cool to show you guys the other stuff that was uh, kind of like visual stuff for the wedding that um, I ended up putting together with my friend, my maid of honor, and um, because we we kind of picked up, she picked a font, and I asked her to use the same font for a bunch of different stuff, and yeah, I think it might be cool to do a separate little vlog later on and or maybe I can even show you guys some more pictures but for this video I'm just gonna stick to the process of the invitation which is almost at its end so as you can see near the end I ended up pulling out a white gouache uh, or poster color I think it was just a poster color paint in order to put just a little bit of extra details in the hair and the flowers and those were the finishing touches and after that I just scanned it in and did some super quick color corrections and yeah so that's pretty much the entirety of the process i am so happy that i'm finally able to share this with you guys and i'm super happy about how well the wedding went and i know that i didn't really talk about it in this video i realized later like while i was taking down some notes that i i don't even know what i would talk about really specifically aside from the fact that i'm extremely happy and it just went super well and i keep thinking about it and lamenting the fact that the day was just over so quickly and i wish i could just relive it one more time <laughs> and that's about it so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed watching the process of me painting these invites and or the one painting for the invite and um yeah i will see you guys in my next video bye